Good morning, good morning, good morning. And what a lovely morning. It's uh, not uh, it's not cold actually. 6th of December. Low white cloud, high white cloud actually. Forgot to do the colour correction on the video yesterday. But uh, I mucked about with it a bit after I'd uploaded it and uh, I think I've found out, you know, I've just got to reduce the red a bit. I mean, my face might be this red, I don't know. I haven't looked in the mirror. <laughs> because this is all very grey and, well, this I was going to say this is all very red. But what I'll do is I'll apply the colour correction now so that you can see before and after, can't you? So, how are you? I hope you're well. hope you're enjoying life. It's, uh, I don't know about you, I'm not particularly religious, to say the least. So I'm not looking forward to anything really afterwards. This is it, baby. So, Carpe Diem, that's what I say. I'm running late. <laughs> I'm supposed to be at work at uh, 9.30, <laughs> it's 9.16. And uh, I'm in. I'm in with a chance. It's about a 20-minute journey, isn't it? These videos are typically about 18 to 20 minutes long. So, on 9:34 to 9:35 to 9:47 is my arrival window. So that I am pushing it along a bit. You know, I am pushing. Uh, so, how's? Uh, How's life in the world of NHS and private dentistry? I must say we're a lot busier than we were. <laughs> we are, uh, had a chat with the hygienist yesterday. Hello, you know who you are? And uh, we sort of, uh, you know, we, we're, we're coming together in terms of our advice because that was one of the things that was criticized on our survey was that it was difficult when the a dentist and the hygienist give different advice, especially if the patient gets straight out of the dentist chair, having been given the dentist's advice, and then jumps straight into the hygienist chair to get a completely different load of advice. And uh, it's bad enough uh, showing the same patient to 10 dentists and getting 12 different opinions without going to see uh, one, two practitioners in one practice and getting two different opinions. Within, within 45 minutes. So, basically I'm trying to get it to the point where it's plaque control first. Because so often I get patients in who have got failed bridges, failed dentures, failed implants, and uh, the first thing I do is I look at the plaque and it's, it's pretty appalling. We had a young lady in yesterday, very, you know, one of these young girls is dressed in a gym clothes all the time because she's always down the gym or running or whatever and uh, had quite a lot of occlusal caries new stuff you know obviously quite shocking to her and uh, I said to her you know are you do you eat sort of quite a lot of sugar if they hesitate for more than about two seconds then the answer is yes uh, she eats a lot of fruit as well but and thinks probably thinks she's on a healthy diet uh, she's got a lot of occlusal caries. So I don't know what you know, what do you do with a young girl who's like in her early twenties? We charge £84 for an occlusal. And she's probably gonna need about 12 of those. So it's a it's a problem, isn't it? We'll probably do a deal with her on the price. What I tend to do is if we've got one occlusal in a quadrant and we've numbed we've numbed them up then I'll, I will do the quadrant if they're all occlusals I'll do it all for 84 quid so that cuts the cost down by about two thirds which is I think is it's about as reasonable as it could get for both sides anyway all you can do is you can just do one of them and then see how bad it is you know and then if you you know if it is obviously frank decay and, and possibly slightly worse than it looked from the surface then um, you know you just have to tell them that it's quite likely that, that 
three or four of their other teeth that will need attention. But, um, I mean, technically, if they cut down on the sugar, I mean, if they cut the sugar out completely, whatever it is they're eating, it's usually something stupid like jelly babies. Um, then, then, then the decay would stop, wouldn't it? You know, and the sort of the old wisdom used to be that you could seal it in with a fissure sealant, and that would be the uh, teeth would be fine. But uh, does anyone really believe that? You know, apart from the chief dental officer, I don't know. You can't tell how much decay you're sealing in, and you can't guarantee it's sealed. So, and you can't guarantee that the patient's going to give up sugar. So. You know, what do you do? Do do pretty minimal uh, closal restorations. But this is again, I think you have a problem when you're on the health service because you only want to do one, don't you? You want to do one filling, get your claim, your class B course of treatment claimed for, and then get them back in another six months and then do another filling. I suppose someone like that would be a gold mine for, for an NHS practitioner, providing they did one filling every six months. With us, we've got the option. We can do a filling every six months, or we can, or we can do a quadrant. If you're doing a quadrant on the health service, uh, then you are effectively doing all the other fillings free of charge, aren't you? Because you only get paid for the first one. So I suppose that's one way that private dentistry and NH dentistry uh, are quite similar in that you get paid, you get paid for the first filling, and then you decide whether you want to do all the rest for nothing. At least we have get the option. We, we've got the option to charge for the rest of the fillings if we decide that uh, we want to. And what do you, I think that's three UDAs, isn't it? Which must be about 75, 80 quid now. There's a big, um, <clears throat> there's a big sort of hoo-ha going on at the moment in that one of the big local surgeries is um, closing around the corner from us with uh, 8,000 registered patients. And of course the you know, they're closing at the end of March. And so immediately I heard that they were closing at the end of March. I thought, well, this is budgetary things. It's nothing to do with the quality of the work or the local need or demand. It's all about the budget. They want to cut the dental budget next year. And they can't cut the dental budget now without... <laughs> what they could do is they could top slice all the, the dentists, a bit like they did in 1992 we just deduct 7% off of everybody's gross and we all know how well that went down don't we boys and girls and it caused a national strike so uh, I think they think that uh, dropping a nuclear bomb on 8,000 patients and in one practice is infinitely preferable and leaving leaving the rest of the practices alone is infinitely preferable to uh, to throwing a hand grenade into every single surgery in the area <laughs> <laughs> no, no fun for the patients though getting chucked out. You know, <clears throat> and obviously a, a, a total anomaly and feature, a feature and a benefit of the Cockcroft system, that your uh, the contracting system is that you're at the mercy of the local contractor. In in the same way as all the local cabbage producers are at the mercy of Tesco's. They drop you, then that's it. You've got eight thousand cabbages and nowhere to go <laughs> and so we're thinking of whether it's worth sort of trying to attract some of the cabbages into our practice so but it was going to involve putting like a half page advert in the newspaper and but it's going to be you know and uh it's not the expense that's the problem it's it's the image you know is it you know it's a bit like the petrol station that that has the only petrol station that's got petrol and so they decide to charge twice as much a litre as they would do normally and sort of gouge as much profit as they can out of the situation out of other people's misfortune and you're not really supposed to be seen to be making money out of other people's misfortune even though you made the right decisions and set up a surgery that was you know that could could weather economic upturns and downturns and the sort of the vicissitudes of uh, public local public spending budgets and you you know you take less out and you put more in 
and your surgery survives, like the guy with the petrol station who's got, perhaps he's got bigger tanks than everyone else, or he saw it coming and so he ordered a delivery like two weeks before he thought that the delivery drivers might go on strike, etc., etc. So he's invested in, in providing a service to the public and then they come out with a law that says, no, you can't recoup any of those expenses. You can't, uh, you know, you can't be more profitable by being a better businessman. You have to, uh, you have to sell your pro petrol for the, you know, the normal price, and don't recoup any. You know, the fact that you might have larger uh, overdraft because you've got more petrol in your tanks, which is for like nine out of nine out of ten years is lying around, just really being overstocked. You know, having more inventory than you need. So. <clears throat> But I don't, you know, it's a difficult thing, isn't it? It's the sort of thing you have to really think about. And this is, and again, the sort of things you really need to think about are the ones that you don't have much time to think about. Because if I want to get an advert in the paper next week, I'm probably, today's the deadline, Thursday or Friday would be the deadline for next week. And you've got to do the artwork, and if you're going to do it yourself, it's going to look a bit naff, although, I mean, I've done some stuff, and you know, I used to produce a magazine, so I'm probably okay with doing the artwork, but then it's the time. And then, uh, you know, they're going to sting you for a few hundred quid, aren't they, for half a page, one off half a page. And then what's the message? You know, how do you come across? Bearing in mind, we're a private practice and that's 8,000 NHS uh, patients that are being slung out. I mean, I know a lot of patients come to private practitioners because their their NHS practitioner is closed. So, and we do a lot that, you know, they might find attractive. We, for example, we don't charge for the, your first checkup. It's normally 58 pounds. Um, but the first checkup with us is free of charge because basically all it is is us just having a look patient agreeing for us to have a look um, we do we do some digital x-rays if we need to usually we do uh, we do those free of charge because you know it's I don't I don't like uh, added extras you know I don't like I don't like quoting a price to someone and saying, oh, it's £58 for a checkup. Oh, but by the time you've added on the cost of, you know, the x rays, it's probably nearer 78 uh, I'd rather charge 78 and say the x rays are included free, and then if they're not needed, then just don't do them. And that's not because I'd make more, I would make more money like that, because I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, it, it would be on average, it would even itself out anyway. You would charge like 65 or something, wouldn't you? Because on some patients you don't do x-rays, but, uh, you know, I, the, the reason why was that I don't want <clears throat> the patient, if the patient knows, let's say, that, let's say they're going to get charged £7 for some bite wings, which is not much. But I don't want to say right now I want to do some bite wings on you. And I don't want the, there to be any hint that the patient might be sitting there thinking, yeah, I know why he's doing those. You know? It's nothing to do with finding decay between my back teeth. It's nothing to do with, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing a thorough checkup. It's because he's, he's just added seven quid on, hasn't he? Just added seven quid on. And it's like what they do in the cars. Remember, if you um, ever make a mistake of taking your car in for a service and they say, oh yeah, you need a service in MOT, Mr. Watson. Does anything else need doing? Anything else need doing? Like they're doing Clintons, you know. Oh, so you bought a birthday car there. Are you all right for string and wrapping? Are you all right for string and wrapping? So yeah, yeah, fine, yeah, I've just bought a birthday card. Don't get excited. You're not going to sell the whole shop to me just because I bought a birthday card. You know, this is Mr. Angry here. Careful with money. And then in the in the, uh, <coughs> in the old garage, they say, oh, anything else needs doing? And once I made the mistake of saying, um, uh, yeah, it needs new windscreen wipers. Oh, back comes the bill. 22 quid, new windscreen wipers. I said, is that right, 22 quid for a couple of bits of rubber? Oh, well, we don't do the rubber. No, we can't just change the rubber. We don't stock the rubber. Uh, we only stock the arms. So we've changed the arms. They changed the arms, the, the metal bit, the whole me metal bit. Just because the rubber had strip had worn out, they changed the metal arms and charged me 22 quid. This is a few years ago now. This is when I was young. So I'm like, right. <clears throat> Okay, I've got it. Um, I'm a quick learner. Mrs. Watson didn't have many stupid children. You never say that you want anything else doing. Don't ask them for a favour. Don't ask them to just to fix something for you if it's all right. 
they'll take, in, they'll take a diabolical liberty. And I think charging for digital x-rays, while on the face of it, is, is entirely fine. You know, I mean, we charge for everything, and, and you could argue that the cost of everybody's digital x-rays are getting passed on to the people who do pay for their checkup and don't need them. But having said that, we do do them on everyone. You know, we do on everyone every two years, or if they're very, very low decay rate, perhaps every three or four years, something like that. So it's, and the, the cost is included. It's not hidden, you could say it's hidden, it's not really hidden. They, we just don't ever charge for x-rays. And that means that if I say to someone, look, I'm gonna need to do some x-rays, we can take them down the x-ray room, we can zap, 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 as much as we like, without worrying about the fact that we are gonna put ourselves in a difficult and awkward, embarrassing situation when the patient gets to the desk and they say, right, well, that's a, uh, that's 600 quid, <laughs> 58 for the checkup, and 550 for a full mouth x-ray survey. You know, I'm exaggerating, but I mean, you know, we just don't have those. And the patients like certainty. That's one thing I do. Tangibility, in terms of being able to touch things, you know, this is why we've got an internal camera, so we can show people what we're doing. We can show people what their problems are, so their problems are tangible. And part of tangibility is having a tangible cost. You know, you have to give them a fully itemised and fully costed estimate, which is actually a quotation, really, because it, we do stick to it, and uh, it's not an estimate. It, that is the price, so it's a quotation. However, if they, um, if they, uh, if the treatment changes, then we stop and we have a chat with them and say, look, your quotation will now be different because we're quoting for a different work. But um, you know, not. Uh, but they come in. They've got they've got 58 quid for a checkup, and possibly another 49 to see the hygienist. And they do not want another 20 quid unexpected on top. It, it, it upsets them. Not that they can't pay it. Probably they would cough up, and some of them probably wouldn't even bat an eyelid. But uh, some of them would would get upset. It would upset me if I went into hospital and they said your aftercare was included. And then I started finding out I had to buy my own bandages stuff. <laughs> anyway, that went quick, didn't it? Anyway, I better rush. It's 9.33, I haven't done too badly. I'll talk to you tomorrow, all right, bye.